are you doing here? Dad. Sir. <gasps> I do remember thinking, why would a dude bring a trumpet into a movie theater? Barry, I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you, but we couldn't save him. Save who? <laughs> oh, Barry, your test is. We had to remove both. Now Monday morning, Monday morning is when I actually grew up in, uh, in Louisiana and went to law school down at Tulane. Um, but I moved over here after law school and uh, been on the Eastern Shore and working here with my office in Robertsdale. For I've uh, been practicing law for 20 years now. I had written this uh, short book called um, The Pains of April when I was in law school about 1987 or so and it was uh, something I typed out on a typewriter one finger at a time and put it underneath my bed. I happened to be in Sonny Brewer's bookstore in Fairhope one day overhearing him telling somebody about how he was doing a little publishing on the side. went home and got my manuscript and came back and gave it to him and uh, he ended up deciding he wanted to publish it. And I think it was the first book that Over the Transom had ever paid to publish. And in 1999, we published uh, The Pains of April. And that got the attention of a bigger publishing company out in California, McAdam Cage, who has since published my other seven books since then. And a children's book, Glitter Girl and the Crazy Cheese. And The God File, which was the second book I published, was a very serious book. And that's actually why I started writing Life is a Strange Place. Towards the end of The God File, I immersed myself so much in that book that I was um, pretty depressed about it and started writing a short story that ended up being Life is a Strange Place, which was a lot more fun to write. Got going on later, but I was thinking of hitting a happy hour over at Chili's. I don't date people at my workplace. You're smart. It's a smart idea. You got beauty and brains. TGIF. I couldn't imagine living for anything other than women. <laughs> I think all of us have met somebody who just didn't quite grow up from the college days. And uh, a guy who maybe. Uh, doesn't really care much about his job and he's not married and doesn't have any kids and just still spends the great majority of his time uh, chasing women around. And I just thought to myself that how could you take a guy like that, if there was a person like that, how could you uh, make them instantly uh, take notice of their lives um, and where they were instead of a five or ten year metamorphosis where they would change, that it had to change instantly and I thought well if an event happened for a guy like that, what is the symbol of his life at that stage? The symbol of his life is probably his manhood. And if he had some type of horrible accident where they had to remove his boys, then maybe he would uh, take stock of where he was. And I just, it was a good way to start a book because immediately you've got this guy that, that has this happen to him. And then immediately he begins to see the world very differently than he did before. And, uh, and so it's really not about that. It would have been very easy, I think, for the Hollywood people to have made this a gimmick movie, you know, for 17-year-old boys to sit in the back of the theater and, and snicker. But the, uh, the people involved understood from the beginning that that's not really what, what this story was about. This story is about growing up. It's about figuring out what's important in this life. And it just so happens that it's a strange journey that he takes. Group provides support to understand what has happened to us. When I was 11 years old, my penis was severed. Now the end pokes out like a little snappy turtle. <laughs> well, there was a guy. There's a guy involved in this process named Rich Green, and Rich is uh, uh, an agent with Creative Artists, and he stumbled upon this book, um, and I think fell in love with it. You know, the whole goofy idea, and from the beginning. He said, this book is going to become a movie, and it's going to take a long time to do it, and you need to be patient, but there are people out there that'll, that'll get this, like I do. And he got involved in the project, a guy named Chris Dorenzo, and Chris is a screenplay writer, also wrote the uh, story for Rock of Ages, the Broadway musical. 
Uh, Chris is a young screenwriter, and he uh, picked this book up and wrote a screenplay. I guess it would have been. The book was published in 2003, and the screenplay was written in 2005, I think. Um, and he did get it all along to, and had opportunities, I think, to have sold out. But instead, he put together a really fine cast of people to play these characters, in my opinion, and uh, and did a good job. I mean, there's a lot. There's a little that's been changed. Most of the book ends up on the screen, uh, the vast majority of it. But I learned a lot about how certain things work on paper that don't work on film. And so half the book's gone as soon as you convert it from a book to a screenplay. And when I first saw the screenplay, not ever having had any of my books converted into a screenplay, it was a little shocking, you know, to watch what somebody had done to your uh, child here. And so my reaction was that uh, I didn't care for it. But slowly but surely, I think it became clear to me that there were some people that understood this process better than I did, and that I really needed to kind of let go. After I had finished writing the book, um, my control ends with the last word on the last page. I had a lot more fun in this process once I kind of let go of that. I just want to meet you. This is the first time Ginger has brought a man home to meet us. Our Jennifer brings fellas home all the time. But that's Jennifer. We've never had much time alone together, Barry. Why are you doing this? Oh my god! My water broke. There's some people in this in this movie, um, Billy D. Williams and Sybil Shepherd and Malcolm McDowell and Gene Smart. Uh, to go along with uh, Patrick Wilson and Judy Greer. And they just surrounded those two main characters with very good actors and actresses. Uh, and I got to meet a lot of them out there. <clears throat> and they're going to have a big fancy uh, premiere, local one, which is very nice for the um, distribution company Magnolia Pictures to do at the Crescent Theater in downtown Mobile on Dolphin Street, October the 8th through the 14th. Um, they're going to show it down there. Two shows on Friday the 8th at 6 and 8.30, and then three shows on Saturday, a matinee, and then two evening shows, and then three shows on Sunday, and then again Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I believe. Total of about 15 showings at the movie. And they've asked me to, the, uh, the movie people asked me if I would go to the first five of those and uh, do a little question and answer afterwards. So I'm hoping that if uh, any of my friends are in the audience, they won't ask any inappropriate questions. Well, um, after this book was published, I've had uh, three or four novels published um, different, again, than this book. Uh, the Point of Fracture and Blood and Circumstance and A Thin Difference were kind of legal mysteries, psychological. And uh, the last book that was due to be published called Austin Emily was a funny book. And in fact, I'm going to work on a screenplay with a screenplay writer on that. But it hasn't actually been published yet. And to tell you the truth, I've, uh, I've written all I really need to write right now. I've said all I need to say for a while. So I don't have any plans and I don't have anything I'm working on, except for raising kids and uh, being a husband and, and working. <laughs> Dear Mr. Monday, I represent the interests of Miss Ginger Farley. Miss Farley believes that you are the father of her unborn child. Are you absolutely positivo that the baby's mine? Yes, Barry, I'm positivo the baby is yours. I want to be a part of this, like a real dad, you know, with dedication. Barry Monday, I'm the father. I heard that sometimes women poop during the birth. It's natural. <laughs> are you retarded? Barry is uh, quite a guy. I wish you all the best coming out of your mom. You being pregnant was a real miracle. There's purpose now. 